Hey, good afternoon. My name is Gregory, and the title of today's exercise or today's unit is Here and Now. And the things we will be looking at are colors and clothes, the present continuous, opposite verbs, and what's the matter. And to start with, let us identify these colors and write the name of the color underneath each color. First one they've done for us is red. What are the rest of these colors? They are all the colors you can choose from. Pick the correct colors and write their names in the correct spaces. And if you have completed, then let us have a look. That is red, green, that is white, that is black, that is blue, that is grey, that is brown, and that is yellow. Then, what are these clothes? Write words from the box. And we have a choice of these words, jacket, trainers, and so on. And here are the pictures. Can you identify these items of clothing? They've done the first one for us, that is a jumper, also known as a jersey. Jumper is the, what the English call it. Jersey is what it's called in many other places. And then what do we have in these pictures? Jacket, trainers, trousers, a suit, and so on. When you've completed, let's check the answers. We have a jumper, we have a shirt and tie, we have a t-shirt and shorts, we have a skirt, we have a dress, we have shoes and socks, we have trainers, and we have a jacket. Here we have a scarf, boots, a suit, and trousers. Do you get them? Good. Make sure you've completed all of the boxes and written in the item of clothing before we move along. And then listen and repeat. Unit 13. Tape script 13.1. Clothes. 1. A jumper. Two, a shirt and tie. Three, a t-shirt and shorts. Four, a skirt. Five, a dress. Six, shoes and socks. Seven, trainers. Eight, a jacket. Nine. A scarf. Ten. Boots. Eleven. A suit. Twelve. Trousers. Okay, make sure you fold in the correct items in the boxes, please. And then just have a look around you in the classroom or wherever you find yourself. What other clothes can you see around you? And how would you describe them? What color are they? For instance, Lillian's skirt is black. Roberta's shirt is blue. And so on. Practice, that's the thing to do. We're now going to be looking at present continuous. To start with, we've got five statements here and we need to Complete the sentences about some of these people. So the first one says, Nigel's wearing a grey 
something and a white something is reading his emails. So if you look at all of these people, who looks like they are reading emails? He does, doesn't he? Then Leo's wearing a something top and something trainers and he's running. That has to be Nigel. Rick's wearing something jeans and black something and he's carrying trays of food. That would have to be Rick then, wouldn't it? Eva's wearing a something jacket and a something boots and she's carrying a black bag. Therefore, that must be Eva. There's the black bag. Polly and Penny are wearing yellow something and blue something else and they're eating ice cream. That would have to be them there because those are the ones eating ice cream. So what are the missing words? Nigel's wearing a grey jacket that we can see, probably a suit, and a white shirt. He's reading his emails. Leo's, let's have a look at the answers in fact. Nigel's wearing a grey suit and a white shirt. He's reading his emails. Leo is wearing a yellow top and white trainers. He's carrying, he's running. Rick is wearing blue jeans and a black t-shirt. He's carrying trays of drinks. Eva is wearing a green jacket and brown boots. She's carrying a black bag. And Polly and Penny are wearing yellow dresses and blue shoes. They are eating ice cream. Did you get all of those? If you did, very well done. Listen and check. Tape script 13.2. What are they wearing? 1. Nigel's wearing a grey suit and a white shirt. He's reading his emails. 2. Leo's wearing a yellow top and white trainers. He's running. 3. Rick's wearing blue jeans and a black t-shirt. He's carrying trays of drinks. 4. Eva's wearing a green jacket and brown boots. She's carrying a black bag. 5. Polly and Penny are wearing yellow dresses and blue shoes. They're eating ice cream. OK, all done. Now, grammar spots. The present continuous describes what is happening now. For instance, he's reading his emails. They are eating ice cream. I'm sitting in the classroom. And we make the present continuous with the verb to be, am, is, or are, plus the verb plus ing. Present continuous verbs end with ing. So complete these sentences. I'm studying English. You, we, they are wearing jeans. She or he is playing in the garden. Let's have a look at the grammar reference on page 129, 13.1. Present continuous. Positive. I am working. He, she, it is working. You, we, they are working. Remember, these are all the verb to be. Am, is, are. If it is negative, it is, I'm not working. He, she, it isn't working. You, we, they aren't working. Then we have question 
questions with question words. What am I wearing? What are you wearing? What are we wearing? What are they wearing? What is he wearing? What is she wearing? And then we have yes, no questions and short answers. Are you wearing jeans? Yes, I am. Or no, I'm not. Is she reading a newspaper? Yes, she is. No, she isn't. Get it? Now, what I want you to do is to work with a partner and describe someone in the room. Who is it? And for instance, you would say something like, he's wearing a white shirt, blue jeans, he's sitting next to me. Stand up and describe your clothes. I'm wearing a dark blue tie with spots on it. I'm wearing a blue shirt and I'm wearing glasses. What about you? Stand up and describe your clothes and yourself using present continuous. So it would be something wearing would be the most common verb that you would use. Listen and repeat the questions. Tape script 13.3 What's he wearing? What's she doing? What are they doing? What's he wearing? What's she doing? What are they doing? And ask and answer the questions about the pictures with a partner. What's Nigel wearing? A grey suit and da da da. What's he doing? He's running, eating, walking. What are they doing? What are they wearing? In other words, look at the picture and ask questions about it with your partner. Answer the questions with full sentences. Don't just give a word or two words. Give a full sentence for your answer. And then change over and the one who is giving, asking the questions can now answer the questions. And more practice asking questions. Work with a partner. What are the people doing? Ask and answer the questions. Again, using full sentences. What's he doing? He's cooking. What's he doing? And him. And him. Go down all nine pictures. Ask the question, what is he doing, what is she doing, what are they doing? And answer the question with a full sentence. And if you are finished, let us check the answers. What's he doing? He's cooking dinner for friends. Number two, what's he doing? He's driving to London. Number three, what's he doing? He's having a shower after work. Number four, what's he doing? He's writing an email to his sister. Number five, what's she doing? She's skiing in France. Number six, what's he doing? He's eating an ice cream. What are they doing? They are running fast. Number eight, what are they doing? They are shopping in a mall. And number nine, what are they doing? They are playing golf in the rain. Yes, golfers don't seem to be too worried about the weather, do they? Whatever the weather, if they are due to play a game of golf, they will play no matter what. Did you notice the extra information that was given with the answers? Let us listen. Because, for instance, number one says, he's cooking for friends. We didn't know that he was cooking for friends, but he could be. 
So we can just add some additional information to make the sentence more meaningful and to practice our English. For instance, he is driving to London. He could be driving to the mum as well, for all we know. Let's listen. Tape script 13.4. Asking questions. 1. What's he doing? He's cooking dinner for friends. 2. What's he doing? He's driving to London. 3. What's he doing? He's having a shower after work. 4. What's he doing? He's writing an email to his sister. 5. What's she doing? She's skiing in France. 6. What's he doing? He's eating an ice cream. 7. What are they doing? They're running fast. 8. What are they doing? They're shopping in a mall. 9. What are they doing? They're playing golf in the rain. And what I want you to do is to practice these sentences. Work with a partner. Let him ask you again, what is he doing? And you can say, he's cooking for his friends. He could also say, he's cooking for his family. Or he's cooking for his, the people he works with. What's he doing? He's driving to Dubai. He's driving to the mum. He's driving to Brazil. What's he doing? He's having a shower after work or he's having a shower before work or having a shower after working in the garden and so on. So you can make about different little stories about each of these pictures. Then we have a look at when we use present simple and present continuous. You'll remember present simple, if we use it when something is always true or it is a routine. It is something that is done day after day. And what we're going to do is read about Nigel. And I want you to complete the text with the verbs in the box. So there are all the verbs. And there is information about Nigel. I want you to read the sentences and fill in the gaps with these verbs, please. And if you are finished, let us check your answers. And what we have is, Nigel is a businessman. He works from 9 o'clock to 5.30 every day. He always wears suit, a suit to and tie for work. And he usually has lunch at his desk at 1 o'clock. He arrives home at about 7 every evening and he reads to his children before they go to bed. He often feels very tired at the end of the day. All of these words are present simple. He works. It's his routine. He always wears a suit. It's his routine, day after day. He usually has lunch at 1 o'clock every day. And so on. All of these verbs tell us that this is routine. It is usually what he does. Listen and check. Tape script 13.5. Nigel at work. Nigel is a businessman. He works from 9 to 5.30 every day. He always wears a suit and tie for work. He usually has lunch at his desk at 1 o'clock. He arrives home at about 7 every evening and he reads to his children before they go to bed. He often feels very tired at the end of the day. Okay, did you complete all of those? Check your words and check your spelling. All done? Good, then let's move ahead.
Nigel and his family are on holiday in Spain. Nigel is talking with his boss, Bill, on his mobile phone. Listen to and read the conversation. Tape script 13.6. A holiday phone call. Follow it here. Hello? Nigel, it's Bill. Sorry to call you about work. Oh, hi Bill. That's okay. First things first, are you having a good time? Yes, we are. We're having a great time. Are you staying in a hotel? No, we're not. We're staying in a house with a swimming pool near the beach. Wonderful. And your family? Are they enjoying it? Oh, yes. The kids are swimming in the pool right now. Can you hear them? <laughs> I can. And are you and your wife relaxing? We are. We're sitting by the pool. Karen's drinking lemonade and I'm reading a lot. And I'm not wearing a suit and tie. Just trousers and a t-shirt. You're lucky. It's raining again here. Now, I'm calling about work. OK, Bill, what's the problem? Did you notice the present continuous tense that was used in this conversation? Are you having, staying, enjoying, relaxing, drinking, reading, calling? Those are all words in the present continuous because they refer to what is happening right now. Read the sentences. He wears a suit for work. He's wearing a t-shirt. Which of these two sentences is about now? And which one is true about day after day, but not now? Yes. He wears a suit for work. That is true about day after day, but not now. He's wearing a t-shirt, which is true right now. That is what he is wearing at this moment. Let us have a look at the grammar reference on page 129, 13.2. Present simple and present continuous. We use the present simple to talk about actions that are true for all time or a long time. He comes from Germany. I love my family. My father works in a bank. I get up at 7.30 every day. She doesn't understand French. So those are things that are generally true all the time. <coughs> We use the present continuous to talk about actions that last a short time. The actions are happening now. I usually wear jeans, but today I'm wearing a suit. He's speaking French to that man. He speaks French very well. It's raining. They're swimming. You get it? So, present continuous, actions that last a short time and are happening now. I am speaking now. You are listening now. Okay? How many true sentences can you make about Nigel's holiday? Well, have a look. If you look at the picture, Nigel is enjoying the holiday, would you say? It looks like it, I would say so. He is talking to Bull. Yes. He is calling Nigel. No, Nigel is not calling Nigel. He is staying in a hotel. He is wearing a suit. The raining in Spain doesn't appear. Nigel is swimming in the pool. Nigel is relaxing. Karen is his wife. And she is, so in other words, if you go back to Nigel, 
Nigel isn't wearing a suit, and Karen is enjoying the holiday. Karen isn't talking to Bill. Karen isn't calling Nigel, and so on. So go through all of these using is, isn't, are, and aren't, looking at the picture and what we heard in the conversation with Nigel and Bill, and see how many true sentences there are. Write them down. Write down the sentences that you believe are true. All done? Let's have a look. Nigel is enjoying the holiday. Nigel is talking to Bull. Nigel is relaxing. Nigel isn't staying in a hotel. Karen is enjoying the holiday. Karen is relaxing. Karen isn't swimming in the pool. Bull is calling Nigel. Bull isn't relaxing. The children are enjoying the holiday. The children are swimming in the pool. It isn't raining in Spain. They are enjoying the holiday and they aren't staying in a hotel. Did you get those? If you did, well done. Now, I want you to work with a partner and ask and answer the questions about Nigel's holiday. I want you to take turns in asking the questions and then change over and the other one ask the questions. And when you answer, give a full sentence as your answer, please. So, are they, where, staying, what, the children doing? So, first we need to complete the question. Number one would be, are they having a good time? Yes, they are. Number two would be, where are they staying? What are the children doing? What is Karen doing? What is Nigel doing? Is he wearing a suit? Why is Bill calling? And let's have a look at and check our answers. Are they having a good time? Yes, they are. Where are they staying? They are staying in a house or the swimming pool near the beach. What are the children doing? They are swimming in the pool. What's Karen doing? She is drinking lemonade. What's Nigel doing? He's talking on the phone. Is he wearing a suit? No, he isn't. Why is Bull calling? Because he has a problem. Did you get those all correct? If you did, well done. Check your spelling and check your answers. And listen. Tape script 13.7 1. Are they having a good time? Yes, they are. 2. Where are they staying? They're staying in a house with a swimming pool near the beach. 3. What are the children doing? They're swimming in the pool. 4. What's Karen doing? She's drinking lemonade. 5. What's Nigel doing? He's talking on the phone. 6. Is he wearing a suit? No, he isn't. 7. Why is Bill calling? Because he has a problem. OK, all completed, all correct. If so, then we can move along. Complete the sentences with the verbs in the present simple or present continuous tense. So they've done number one for you. <coughs> <coughs> Nigel lives in a house in London, but now he's staying in a house by the sea. 
He lives in a house that is what is usually true, day by day. But at the moment, and not for a long time, he is staying in a house by the sea. He usually, a suit, but today he... Have a look at all of these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And use the correct form of the verb, either present simple or present continuous, to complete the sentences. If we look at number two, they say, he usually wears a suit. Present simple because it is his day-by-day -day habit. But today he is wearing. Today he isn't wearing. No. He's wearing trousers. He usually wears a suit because day by day that is his habit. But today he is wearing trousers. Number three. He never relaxes at work. Present simple, it's always true. He never relaxes at work. But now, he is relaxing by the pool. For now, he's relaxing at the pool. Karen works in a shop, but today she's enjoying her holiday. The children work hard at school, but today they are swimming in the pool. It often rains in England, and it is raining there now. Let us check our answers and our spelling. You get all of those, and you notice how we use the present simple and the present continuous, depending on what we are wanting to say. Good, then let us move along. Questions and answers. Make the questions. You wear a new jumper, and the question is, are you wearing a new jumper? Now look at the rest of these. Unscramble the words and make a complete sentence. And you'll notice that they use present continuous because it is what is happening now. Number two. Are we learning Chinese? Number three. Are we sitting in a classroom? Number four. Are you listening to the teacher? Number five. The teacher is wearing blue trousers. Number six. All the students are speaking English. No, sorry. Okay, all of this is cancel that whole thing. Look at these this exercise and make questions from the word from the jumbled words. So you wear a new jumper? The question is are you wearing a new jumper? Number two would be Are we learning Chinese? Number three Are we sitting in a classroom? Number four, are you listening to the teacher? Number five, is the teacher wearing blue trousers? Number six, do all the students speak English? Number seven, are you learning a lot of English? Number eight, is it raining today? 
Let us check our answers. Are we learning Chinese? Are we sitting in a classroom? Are you listening to the teacher? Is the teacher wearing blue trousers? Are all the students speaking English? Are you learning a lot of English? Is it raining today? And all of those are using present continuous because they are all talking about what is happening right now. <coughs> and here's another grammar check for us. Put a tick in the box next to the correct sentence. So, I'm wearing a blue suit today, or I'm wearing a blue shirt today. That is the correct one. I'm wearing a blue shirt today. And so on. Check two, three, four, five, and six. And put a tick in the box where the correct, next to the correct sentence. And if you have finished, let us check our answers. I'm wearing a blue shirt today. Where are you going? Peter isn't working this week. That's not Bill over there. He's talking to the teacher. Heidi is German. She comes from Berlin. Why aren't you having a coffee? Did you get those all correct? If so, very well done. Now we are going to have a reading and listening section to this lesson. This week is different. How do very rich people spend their time and money? What don't they do? Compare some ideas with your colleagues and the people in your class. For instance, they often have very big, expensive cars, and they tend not to travel by public transport. <coughs> Let us read. Let us read about the secret millionaire, and then you will do some work around that. The secret millionaire. The secret millionaire is a program on UK's TV channel 4. Every week, a different millionaire leaves his or her comfortable expensive home and lives and works for 10 days with people who aren't rich and need help. The people don't know who he is. They are secret millionaires. So, they, people leave their homes and they pretend to be normal working class people and go and live with a family. So what I want you to do is to read this section about Colin Cameron. And they say he started his business 25 years ago. He's worth 60 million pounds. He has houses in different parts of the world. And last week he went to live with a... He took a train to Manchester and he's living with a poor family in a poor area of the city with a couple who think he is there looking for work. The place is very small and Colin has to sleep on the sofa because they only have one bedroom. And these people run a hostel for homeless teenage boys. And this week, Colin is working with the boys. Read this article. And then we want to answer these questions. First, what is the question? When did he start his business? Where does he live? Does he have any children? Why is he a lucky man? Who does he like to help? The answers to those questions are all here. See if you can find them. Read the article and find the answers to those questions. 
And when you're finished, let us check your answers. When did he start his business? He started his business 25 years ago, when he was 19. Where does he live? He lives in a beautiful big country house. Does he have any children? Yes, he has two teenage sons. Why is he a lucky man? He also has a house in Paris and apartments in London and New York. He drives a yellow Lamborghini and he has a private plane. Who does he want to help? He wants to help people who aren't as lucky as him, especially young people. Did you find all those answers? Did you answer with complete sentences? If so, well done. <coughs> Read, this week is different. Are the sentences true or false? If they are false, correct them and write the correct information. Colin went to Manchester by bus. He's staying in a flat in the center of the city. He isn't sleeping in a bedroom, and so on. Read through all the sentences. Compare that with this week is different, the section of the reading. And if the statement is false, I want you to write the correct information with a complete sentence. And if you are finished, let us, comp let us check your answers. Number one is false. Colin went to Manchester by train. Number two, false. He's staying in a flat in a poor area of the city. Number three is true. Number four is false. The hostel is for homeless boys. Number five is true. Number six is false. They think that he is a good teacher. Seven is false. He is enjoying his time with Roger and Margaret. And number eight is true. Did you find all of those answers? If so, that's excellent. It means that you are reading with good comprehension. And for the last section today, you will have a listening exercise. I want you to listen to four conversations with Colin and complete the chart. And what we want to know is, who is he talking to? What's he talking about? Listen. Tape script 13.8. Four conversations. Conversation one. Hello, I'm Colin. Hi, Colin. Lovely to meet you. This is my wife, Margaret. It's very good of you to come and help us. I'm pleased to be here. Conversation two. That's much better. Now, read it again. There was a man who worked, worked hard and he's busy... Busy... Business. His business became very su su successful. successful. Great. You're doing well. Conversation three. Hello, darling. Colin, how are you? We're all missing you. I'm missing you too, but I'm having a good time. <clears throat> it's very interesting here. Roger and Margaret are wonderful people. Conversation four. Hi, boys. Hiya. Dad, hi. We're doing our homework. Hey, that's good. I'm working hard too. Are you having a good time? I am. I'm with some really interesting people. Oh, can we meet them? Yeah. Yes, you can. I'd like you to meet them. See you soon, Dad. Yeah, I can't wait. See you soon. Did you get that? Who he was talking to and what he was talking about? Let us check your answers. So in conversation one, he was talking to Roger and Margaret. And they were saying, hello, Margaret is thanking Colin for helping them. Second conversation, he's talking to one of the boys in the hostel. 
and Colin is helping the boy to read. Number three, he's talking to his wife, and they're talking about Colin's time with Roger and Margaret. And number four, he's talking to his sons, and they are talking about working hard and meeting the people in Manchester. Did you get all of those? If you did, well done. And I hope you used complete sentences to answer the questions. That concludes today's lesson. Thank you for your time. I hope that it was of benefit to you. I hope you have learned something today, and I hope you will practice what you have learned. Thank you for your time, and until next time, stay well.